Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to tonight's telecast. Great Lakes Valley Conference action. IPFW and their 4-9 record challenging the 9-4 Greyhounds of the University of Indiana, Indianapolis. Charles Washington along with Pam Bob bringing you the action. And if you missed tonight's game, I guess we have someone that can bring you the action uh, firsthand with some great insights. Uh, not great news, but uh, insights from Pam Bout bringing color. <laughs> all right. Yeah, hopefully we can make it live and exciting for all you fans. Tonight's action, Great Lakes Valley Conference action, IPFW, coming in struggling a little bit, but coming off a great win on Thursday evening against Northern Kentucky, the Norsemen. Uh, tonight against the Greyhounds, 9-4, and four, very good record. Uh, Thursday night beat a good Northern Kentucky team, uh, ranked 15th in the nation. And starters, very unsure. I uh, read an article in uh, yesterday's or uh, yesterday's paper by Coach Piazza. Uh, tonight you get Ryan Bond back, uh, leading rebounder at the time when he was injured. Now he's uh, second on the team in rebounding. And hopefully uh, get some extra continuity in there tonight and uh, get another good effort from the Dons. <laughs> Starters for the evening. And we'll be right back right after these brief messages. At the other forward, a 6'6 freshman from St. Joseph, Michigan, number 30, Bart Holobar. And at center, a 6'6 sophomore from Indianapolis, Indiana, number 51, David Wheezy. Indianapolis Greyhounds are coached by Royce Waltman. And now, the starting lineup for your IPFW Mastodons. At guard, a 6'2 sophomore from Whiteland, Indiana, number 10, Ryan Glidden. At the other guard, a 5'9 senior from Hammond, Indiana, number 21, Russ Marcinet. At forward, a 6'1 freshman from New Haven, Indiana, number 25, Jason Whirling. At the other forward, a 6'6 freshman from Marion, Indiana, number 32, Kyle Kirby. Net center, a 6'7 junior from Fairmount, Indiana, number 42, Casey Runyon. IPFW is coached by Andy Piazza and Dick Domanian. All right, let's set the starting lineups for you for Indianapolis. Uh, number 25, Brooks. Number 30, Holyabar. Number 51, Wheezy. Number five, Lucas, and number ten, the Doy J. And for the Dons tonight, number ten, Ryan Glidden, transfer from St. Bonaventure. Number twenty-one, from the region, Hammond, Indiana, Russ Marsnick. Number twenty-five, Jason Worling, playing in from in front of the semi-home folks out of New Haven. Kyle Kirby out of Marion, and Casey Runyon out of Fairmont for the Dons. See if the Dons can get off to a good start as they did on Thursday evening, and uh, that way you have a little cushion towards the stretch. And they sure needed every cushion they had on Thursday evening. Oh, they sure did. It was a really great game for them. Indianapolis controls the tip. Tori brings it up. Tori drives against Marcinic, passes out, shot, and Rebound by Whirling. Oh, and that was a nice rebound. Actually, the Don starting the uh, three-guard offense and uh, with two post players, Kirby and that's Runyon. Didn't get anything. Number 25, Whirling with the ball, drives left. Runyon at the wing. Shot up, three-pointer, no good. Oh, rebound. nice rebound, nice rebound.
Shot. Good block. Weezy with the block. Lucas bringing the ball up. Choi took his eye off the ball. Excuse me, it's Che, not Choi. Noi Che. Marcinic bringing the ball up. Marcinic up front. Tries the right side this time. Verling at the circle. Called on the travel there. A little shuffling of the feet there by Kirby. And Shea will inbound to Lucas. 18-30 just about to go in this first half. And we have a bunch of donuts on the board. Pass the ball right back to Jay. Jay to Brooks. Brooks with the foot inside, and it's off. Another board by Worley. Litton with the quick pull up, and it's a three. Great three off that fast break there. Litton, a very good player. A Division one transfer out of St. Bonaventure, and you'd expect those kinds of things from him. Number 51, Weezy, inside. Litton to Kirby on the block. Good entry. Nice strong play there. 5 2 at the outset of this game. 17 30 to go. Che with the ball against Marsnick. Out top to Brooks. Brooks back to Che. Good defense, good closeout defense that time by Glenn. Rebound. Rebound and a chance to go to the line for number 51, 51 Weezy. Lyle against number 32, Kyle Kirby. First team first. Entering into the game for the Greyhound, number 20, Chad Mill. Number 10, Roy Number 20 into the game for the Greyhound. Chad Mills in for Choi Nay. Did a really good job coming over on the help side there, but we just didn't get the downward rotation in the box out. Good point. And I'm just having all kinds of trouble with Noi Chase. <laughs> <name. laughs> <laughs> Marcy bringing the ball up. Whirling at the circle. Glinton tries the baseline. Great drive, great drive. That foul is on number 25, I believe. Michael Brooks. For the shot. At his first, team's first. Glitten inbound to Marsnick. Runyon at the circle. A little short, a little short. Good hustle by Glitten. Whirling to Kirby. Runyon fights for the rebound. All right, all right. It'll stay here. Good hustle that time. Sure was. Offense didn't look very smooth, but we were working hard. Let the inbound to Whirly. Litton for three. Well, it makes it hard to defend him when he can drive and we can shoot the three. He's definitely a triple threat. Brooks. Brooks with the rebound. Didn't box out that time. Brooks to Lucas. Lucas steps on the in line. 16 21 to go. The good guys ahead. 8 to 3. Still have plenty of time to make it out. Marsnick. Whirly for two. Good drive to the basket by Whirly. Chad Mills brings the ball up against Marsnick. Tries to right side. Lucas at the circle to Brooks. 
blocking foul. Jason Worley, his first. Lucas will inbound the ball. Oh, great defense, great defense. Lucas way in the backcourt to Mills. Mills to Lucas. Lucas shot up off the iron. Pushing foul. That will be against Michael Brooks. That'll be his second. Noe Che back into the ball game for Michael Brooks, who has to sit with his second infraction. Marcinet. Glitton at the circle. Glitton pulls up off the iron soft shot, but it didn't fall for him. Wheezy with the rebound to Mills. Mills, entry. Number 30 passes out to Lucas, who tries the baseline again, and the shot, and it's good. Nice shot, nice pull-up jumper. That's a good-looking move by Lucas. He's very quick, averaging close to 18 points a game, so it's no surprise to see him make athletic moves like that. Marcinet sets the tempo, whirling back to Marcinet. That brings it back out. Oh. I think that foul may be on Marsnick that time. Uh, got a little careless with the ball. Actually, uh, must have been a lack of movement on the inside because he dribbled from side to side a couple of times and didn't seem to have very much to do. Yeah, they're trying to control Lucas. He's just an all around great player. Can't let him get out of control. Couple of substitutions in the ball game. Number 42 for Indianapolis in the game. Kyle Shirt also entering the ball game. Number 41 for IPFW, Dane Adams. And number 33, Steve Sanders. Lucas with Sanders out front. Shay. Sanders with the rebound. Number 42, Kyle Shirk missed an easy one. Adams to Glidden. Marsnick sets it up. Sanders drives to Glidden in the corner. Good entry pass. Yes. Kirby. It's a really nice pass. They were even double teaming. They made a nice move to the middle. Great job. Created a great passing angle. Side. Coach Piazza is a little mad about that call. Weezy will be going to the line to shoot two. Dane Adams, that'll be his first. First shot is up and good by Weezy. Second shot, and it's also good. Good form. Kirby to his new entry into the ball game. Jeff Jackson, and we got a holding foul that time. And foul will be on short, number 42, holding Adam. Did nice job posting up on that one to draw that foul. Sanders to inbound. Roy Che just about stole that inbound pass, but Marsnick chased it down. Marsnick to Sanders. 
Sanders drives. Dane Adams. Might not want to take that shot coming right off the bench. Might want to get up and down a little bit, get into the floor of the game. Choi out to Mills off the back iron. Adams to Marsnick. Sanders in the corner. Kirby back out to Sanders. Working the in and out game there pretty well. Don's using quite a bit of that shot clock. Sanders. No boards. Shea with the rebound out to Mills. Lucas. Good rebound that time by Weezy. Knocked out of bounds by the Dons. And a great job on the help side. We're just not getting a downward rotation from the guard there. Lucas the inbound. 12 to 7. IPFW in front. A little bit over 12 minutes to go. First half. Great Lakes Valley action. Charles Washington bring you the action with Pam Bowden, IPFW Number 20, Mills with a good move to the baseline. IPFW Runyon. Sanders out to Marsnick. Jeff Jackson in the ball game. Marsnick out to Jackson. IPFW's doing a great job working the clock down and trying to get them to make a mistake defensively. Don's moving that ball pretty good, using all that clock. Four seconds to go. Sanders, great shot. Great three-pointer, great time. He's averaging about 18 points in the conference, which is, uh, which is no easy task. It sure is a tough conference. One of the toughest in Division II basketball as we get to travel that time. By Nolan Che. Timeout in the action. 11 minutes and 11 seconds to go. IPFW Mastodon's up 15 to 9 in this Great Lakes Valley action. Don's coming in at 4 and 9, and the Greyhounds coming in at 9 and 4. Greyhounds coming in at 9 and 4 have some pretty big scores in there. Lucas coming in at 17 4 game. Michael Brooks at 13 2. But right now, that's the college cable access program guide provides information about our program, including IPMW Sports Telecast to receive your free, that's right, free Channel 6 program guide. Send your name, address, and zip to Channel 6 at IPFW 2101. Coliseum Boulevard East, Fort Wayne, Indiana, 46805. Or give us a call at 481-6000. Back to the action. Mills inbounds to Che. Che with Jackson guarding. Wheezy. Runyon with the rebound. Casey had eight caroms on Thursday evening. Good catch that time by Adams. Litton in the corner. Jackson. Jackson now playing a point. Settle it down a little bit. Look the with the tray. Nay. Out of bounds underneath for both teams have given him a lot of trouble. We seem to be getting the ball way up high and even past the center line. So hopefully we can set a little better screens down low and uh, see if we can work it in. Kirby replaces Runyon. Runyon, I think, uh, took three three pointers, not shy at all. Yeah. 
Litton at the circle to Sanders. Sanders tries the baseline out to Adams. Banks not open for Adams. Shea with the ball. Shea to Brooks to Lucas. Cross court. Shea. Good pass. And a great cut that time by Michael Brooks. Yeah, we let him go baseline that time. Got to control that baseline 16, cut. 11. Shea getting quite a few rebounds from the point guard slot. Kyle just didn't get around on that one. Another foul on Kyle Kirby. Runyon. That was a brief stint that time for Kirby. Lucas to Che. Weezy out top. Che to Brooks. Lucas at the top. Marshnick. Good defense. Jeff Jackson out of Elkhart, Indiana, with the great defense that time, denying Che over the ball. VFW is really working hard all the way around defensively, and they've really chopped the clock down. They're down to 16 seconds. I think Che is well aware of that. He's a very good point guard, very handy player. Lucas. Marsnick with the carom. Brings it up the left side, now takes it to the top. 15-11 with nine minutes to go here in the first half. Don's on top of the Greyhounds. Litton with the man in his face. Brooks to Lucas to Che for three. Timeout by the Dons. 15-14 with 8.44 to go here in the first half. Seems like we got to get back a little bit better on defense uh, against their uh, break there. Yeah, that last uh, fast break, there really was no excuse. The ball, long shot, ball fell, no passes, and you get a three-point shot right in the corner. the Dons need more more action from the point guard position uh, both point guards really aren't looking to score and I think the Greyhounds know that and they aren't they're really slacking off on uh, first for the, for the most part Russ Marshnick and then when Jeff Jackson played a little bit of the point point. and yeah. even on Thursday evening Russ Marshnick has to put some fear into those defensive players by being more of an offensive threat yeah I agree with you on that he does a good job settling it when we need to settle it, but if we got that break, you know, we've just got to go for it and see what we can do and see if we can put a little uh, pressure on the, the defense there on the break. Russ out of Hammond and uh, Jeff Jackson out of Elkhart, they were scores, and they have to at least be threats out there from the point guard position. I think that's clogging things up quite a bit on the inside for the Dons. Mm -hmm. Back to live action here. 15-14. Runyon inbounds to Marsnick. Let's see what happens out of the out of the break, out of the timeout. But Andy Piazza is drawn up for the dime. Really working the ball here. That's good, some good movement. With a high percentage shot. Runyon with seven on the clock. Glitton to Adams. Oh. Just like Coach Piazza threw it up, right, man? Oh, yeah. We, we, we worked the clock down to one second, so that's got to help us a little bit. <laughs> a deflection or two, just like he drew it up for a layup. 
Russ is doing a great job defensively, cutting uh, the little give and go pass off there. Shay, Lucas out top now. Shay in the corner, looking for Weezy on the post. Lucas drives left. Good shot. Tough shot. Either our post player came out on that one to try to def deflect it, but it just didn't happen. He's a good-looking player, uh, averaging 18 in the GLVC after five games. Again, good player. Dane did a good job controlling that. Uh, pass was a little iffy, and he bobbled a little bit, but he did a good job uh, gathering himself up there and uh, trying to go for the two there. You're right. Good job to get something positive out of that. Yeah. Could have been a turnover, but we got a foul out of it. Foul on number 44 for Indianapolis. Try to work the ball around there and the inbounds. Jackson to Jason Burkhardt to Marsnick. There you go, Russ. Yeah, he can become a threat from out there for three point land. It's going to cause him some defensive problems. Exactly. That's what you have to do. You have to be a threat out there. And Russ can stick that shot, as you just saw. Shirk with the rebound, not the miss. And a foul. That time on Big Country. That's what the guys call him. Big Country. Jason Burkhart. We've just got to do a better job on the weak side boards. Uh, you know, if we're giving up the two points or... Uh, getting the foul out of that. Uh, you know, we just got to do our job defensively. We're not getting it done on the on the weak side there, on the box out. You're right. And with the small lineup that IPFW quite frequently employs, a three-guard offense, you have to put a body on somebody, especially on the weak side, because that's where the majority of the rebounds are going to come. You as a coach, I know you know that principle. Yeah, we're getting there. Marsnick up court to Jackson. Jackson looking for Burkhardt, back out to Marsnick. Burkhart did a nice job sliding down the lane that time. Good move that time by Big Country. Boy, that was a sweet turnaround jumper. They're clapping in Muncie. <laughs> now we're mismatched somewhere. That should be a double dribble. If I were refereeing, he bounced that ball. Then pick it up and bounce it again. Oh, my goodness. Missed the switch on the screen and threw the foul off that one because we didn't recover. Polybar scores, and you can't let someone get to the basket that easy. And if you're going to foul somebody, you can't let them get it up on the glass that easy. They can go to the line and earn it. Get the guards uh, driving like that, and it just put so much pressure on your post players, and then they pull up and they draw the fouls, and it gets you in real trouble down low. You're right. Gambling and losing throws everybody off. Now we got a lane violation. The Dons just can't shoot themselves in the foot with those kinds of mental mistakes. You know, one or two mistakes like that, and then you, you get somebody back in the ball game, and uh, you know, it just turns the ball game around real quick. So you got to yeah. be into it mentally from get go, whether you sub it in or not. The bottom lines are is the scoreboard. But there are a lot of things that lead to what happens on that scoreboard. Little, little, a lot of little things. Marsnick brings the ball up. Marsnick to Whirling, newly into the game. Sanders also just into the ball game. Burkhardt back to Whirling. Burkhardt did a good job kicking that ball back out to the perimeter. Again, good move by Whirling, but um, you have to question coming right into the game off the bench and not getting a little bit into the flow of the game, getting up and down the court a couple of times before you take a shot, unless it's a layup. Just squeeze right through there. Like four guys on the inside. 
That ball bounced a few times on the ground. Somebody's got to get in there. Good move by Sanders. Great up and under move there. Got the basket and the foul. Sanders has really stepped it up in the GOVC. He's averaging about 11 points in non-conference games. But since the conference has started, he's up around 18 points per game. Dane Adams just came in, replacing Jason. IPFW applies a little pressure this time. Trap. Great play that time by Marston. Smart play. Smart play not taking that shot. He didn't have the, the real good pass there, so smart play setting it up. Runyon with the ball on the post. Looks opposite to Marsnick in the corner to Sanders. Sanders out to Burley. Marsnick with the clock running down, and he nails another three. That's the second three he's taken, and he's hit both of them. He's done a great job. That's the kind of play that should open it up on the inside uh, for the big guys for the Dodge fam. That sure is going to put a lot of de uh, pressure on their defense. Shea out with the Dons leading 28 to 21. Shirt. Number 30, Bart Holubar in the lane. Too long. Number 40 enters the ball game. Danny Johnson, for sure. Marsnick, Runyon back to Marsnick to Whirly. Good ball rotation. it has gone to a 2-3 zone that time. That should open up some outside shots for us up, uh, up top. That kind of surprises me. Well, actually not. I guess if you stick a couple of outside shots, as the Dons have done, sometimes teams will tend to do that. Shea out to Lucas. Johnson in the corner. Lucas up top with Whirling. Switch that time. That looked like pretty good defense, but they got Whirling on the foul. Post player just didn't get out enough to stop that uh, on the switch there on the screen and uh, didn't give our guard enough time to get down there. And at the same time, it wasn't a very good screen, and I think Whirling could have fought over the top, leaving Adams out there against Lucas. It's kind of... Yeah, that's a tough mismatch. <laughs> that's like leading, leading the lamb to the lion. <laughs> Jackson enters the game as we get a good look at... Now the IPFW coach will be for that. The Indianapolis coach, Royce Waltman. 28 to 23 now. Jackson with Adams posting. Back out to Marsnick. Going back to the man-to-man. -man. A little short that time by Sanders. that time number 30 Bart Holubar and as you stated Pam the uh, Greyhound switched up last time down court they were in a 2-3 zone and they switched up to a man-to-man -man in, in hopes I think of confusing the Dons in their offensive schemes yeah and sometimes that works and uh, you know it didn't catch us off guard that time so hopefully we can make the adjustments and uh do the right thing offensively, and whether we get the shot from the top against the zone or if we keep driving uh, on the man-to-man, -man, see if we can keep drawing the foul. Sanders good on the first free throw and good on the second. Now, I've heard coaches say, Pam, that if you have a good offense, you can run it against a zone or a man. 
I think that's true. It's just a matter of executing and uh, just having some good basic concepts of what's going on fundamentally, understanding what the defense is doing. Good defense that time by the Dons. Great hustle. First Jackson went for a steal, or I think it was Sanders went for a steal, then in the corner, Runyon did get a hand on the ball. Mills back in the game for the Greyhounds, checking in for Johnson. Lucas inbounds to Che. Lucas for three, no. And Sanders with the rebound to Marsnick. 238 left to go. Great Lakes Valley action. 30 to 23 to Dons ahead of the Greyhounds from Indianapolis. Sanders out top to Jackson. Deflected out of bounds that time by Indianapolis, but that's a tough pass for a big man going to the corner. Yeah, especially with the bounce pass, uh, you know, right at the knees there. Marsnick sets the tempo for the Dons. Turnaround jumper by Runyon. Nice jumper, faded away a little bit, still got it. Nice uh, to, to fall in there. Good rhythm that time. Great rhythm. Weezy in the corner against Adams. Oh, great defense down low there. Weezy dribbles off the foot. Runyon inbounds to Marsnick as Coach Piazza puts up the four. So this is play number four for the Dons. Yeah, it looks like a little flex here. That's a tough uh, offense to learn. There's a lot of continuity to it. You just have to have some good down screens. You gotta wait. Exactly. A lot of timing types of things, and then a lot of instinct types of plays when the defense overplays. A little late call that time, it looked like, by the referee, but the foul will be on number 41, Adams, and number 30 for Indianapolis. Bart Holyabar will be going to the line. Just not coming out on, uh, under control on that one. is the first shot and he'll gain another with 119 left here to play the Don's up 32 to 23 Charles Washington along with Pam Bowden bring you the action J.B. Showalter entering the game for the Don's shaking in for number 41 Jane Adams the Don's only have one player Marsnick really getting significant minutes other than that all the rest of the Dons really do get a, a quite a bit of action. Uh, essentially, eight or nine players get quite a bit of action with Marsnick uh, getting, I guess, the majority of the action above 25 minutes. Marsnick with the ball against Che. Jackson at the top of the circle pulls up. Thought that might have been deflected, but I guess it was just short. I thought he got him a little bit on the wrist, but must not have got a, a foul through on that one with the ball. Just get tip the ball a little bit. Yeah, typically, you don't see a shot from the uh, from the free throw line fall that short without a foul or at least a deflection. Yeah. Lucas out top. Mills at the wing, up top to Che. tried to come up with it. The guy brought the ball down low. Still just couldn't come up with it. Which is what you don't want big people to do, bring it down. And instead of getting an easy two points, you got to go to the free throw line and earn it. May even draw the three point, you know, two, two for the basket going in and the three at the line on that. But uh, bringing it down low just uh, took that uh, extra point away there. And I think he was going for that other big person sin, checking the ball for air in there. Ball has plenty of air, don't need to bounce it, just go straight up with it. 
But he's earned the first free throw. And Holyabar gets the two points anyway. 23 seconds to go to Don should take the last shot here. They're working. Marsnick out top. They're going for one, definitely here. They're down to 13 seconds. Litton at the top of the circle. Good looking play. We got a good look at it. Just didn't fall for Glidden. And at halftime, it is 32 for the good guys, the IPFW Mastodons, 26 for the Indianapolis Greyhounds. Not too bad of a half. Uh, Don's looked uh, pretty good. Don't look like a 4-9 and nine team playing a 9-4 and four team. Uh, at times, looked like it was the other way around. Well, I think Coach Piazza has really tried to slow the game down and uh, control it, and uh, they're doing a great job. Again. 32-26 in favor of IPFW, and we'll take a break for halftime, and we'll return with more Great Lakes Valley action. First year IPFW women's basketball coach Pam Bowden is enjoying a fine preseason after coming to IPFW from the University of Alaska Anchorage. She has inherited a club which returns no seniors but still enjoys one of the top ratings in the Great Lakes Valley Conference. We want you to tune in every Wednesday at 7.30 to find out more information about the IPFW women's basketball team all season long. In our ever-expanding world, we need a reliable source, one that addresses important aspects of our daily lives and provides us with useful information. Health and Home Report is that source, with stories on how to get the most for your money, where to go for a great vacation, hot fashion tips, what's happening in the world of arts and entertainment, and the latest medical breakthroughs. Health and Home Report provides a world of information. The college basketball season is underway for 1994-95, and the Great Lakes Valley Conference has been rated by some as the toughest of the NCAA Division II conferences. Join Coach Andy Piazza and me, Matt DeLong, to get a closer look at the IPFW team and this year's competition. Time and we have a special presentation. I think we have some awards from for some very deserving IPFW alumni letter winners. Some letter winners from the past. We have uh, Dave Skelton, former uh, former coach, former athletic director, worked in development, works in education, just all around IPFW man. David Skelton and uh, Chancellor of IPFW on the floor also, Dr. Michael Wartell. And this is the 25th anniversary. There you see there, they look just as good now as they did then. Well, that's a sure good looking bunch there. <laughs> If we could have your attention for a moment, please. It's indeed a pleasure tonight to welcome back the 1969-70 IPFW men's basketball team in recognition of their 25th anniversary. It's a special treat for me. Uh, I'm Dave Skelton, faculty member of IPFW, and 25 years ago I had the pleasure to serve as the assistant coach for this bunch of guys. Our head coach that year was a man named Bill Altman, 
who now lives in Las Vegas. Too bad, huh? Bill was unable to be here, but he did send us a letter tonight, and I'd like to share some of his thoughts with you. He said, regretfully, I can not be with you tonight, but please express my thoughts. 25 years ago, in a junior high school gym, a ragtag group of athletes, a former player who thought he could coach, and a college instructor who probably knew a little more than all the rest of us put together, were challenged by the uh, activities director to put together a basketball team. Unless you were there, it will be difficult to understand the value and the importance of that year. But these young men were tired, were students, and had no scholarships. Our record certainly was not one of the best in terms of one-loss records, but it was in terms of every time these guys stepped on the floor, they were winners. Congratulations to the team members on being honored, and best of luck in the future, signed Bill Altman. <laughs> Chancellor Mike Wartell will now join me and, uh, in issuing a certificate and a letter to these athletes who are members of the team who are here tonight. And we're giving them a letter tonight because 25 years ago, we couldn't afford one. First, I'd like to introduce Dan Auer. Dan graduated from Ball State in 1974. Ross Gick. Ross is currently a reserve Allen County police officer and employed in transportation here in Fort Wayne. Gary John Lowe's. Gary got his BS degree from Purdue in 71, and this is the third straight year that Gary's been a member of a 25th anniversary team. Mark Putt. Mark is currently employed at IPFW in the dental research department. Jim Ruthier. Jim also graduated from Ball State and is currently teaching in the Elkhart area. Vance Reichert. Vance lives and his wife live in Angola, and Vance works for Consolidated Freight. Stan Schinner. Stan has received his BS degree from IU in 74 is now an area sales manager for UPS in central Indiana. One last bit of congratulations, guys. As they, as they gathered here, I said, can you put yourselves together in alphabetical order? And they did it. Congratulations. Great honor. Um, players from the first IPFW basketball team, Coach Dave Skelton, and as you see there, 1969-70 IPFW men's basketball. And again, I know Mark Putt's in good shape. I uh, play intramural basketball with him, and he's still a pretty good ball player. Shoots with either hand, goes to the basket, great outside shot. Then had a three-pointer in his day, so he takes advantage of it now, shooting it lefty or righty. As you see him there is Mark Putt. Let's go through some of the uh, players. Um, received a letter from Dan Auer, I believe. Ross Gick, present. Gary John Holtz. Mark Putt, of course. Vance Reichert. Stan Shiner. Bill Altman. And Fred Kraft. 1969-70 IPFW basketball team. 25th anniversary. Coach Skelton mentioned uh, they received their letters 25 years later because we couldn't afford them 25 years ago. 
And we will be right back with more GOBC action right after these messages. Hello, I'm Arnie Ball. And I'm Tim Heffern. Watch us every Friday evening at 7 p.m. for IPFW Volley Down Highlights. We'll also describe strategies and fundamentals for all you new volleyball fans. We, we may even invite a volley down or two to join us on the show. So tune in to us every Friday night at 7 p.m. here on Channel 6. team coming out and finally getting their letters for 25 years ago and some other gifts. Don's up 32-26 as we're about to get ready for the second half. And we have um, a few points for you. Uh, mainly, I, guess, I think the big thing, Pam, uh, the Don's uh, three-point shooting, uh, really, and I think they hustled and got to loose balls a little bit better uh, than the Greyhounds in the first half, but mainly, that three-point shooting is what has them up the six points at half. Well, it sure has, and I'll tell you, if uh, Indianapolis hasn't got to the line 13 times, they would uh, be down by about 10 points right now. And I'll tell you, our guys are doing a great job from the threes. And I think uh, Russ Marsnick has done a great job setting a tempo, and when he has been called upon and when he's had to, he's stuck that three-point shot. And I personally would even like to see him take a few more. Well, I'll tell you, we've worked the clock down three, four, five times against uh, Indianapolis and getting it down within about five seconds. And if you're doing that uh, offensively and really making somebody work, you're going to get good shots. And also another uh, point for the Greyhounds, uh, Lucas, who I expect to just come in here and light up the scoreboard, has been relatively quiet uh, considering uh, being their leading scorer. And as quick as he is, I really expected him to kind of control the game. But uh, for the most part, uh, we've had him in check. Yeah, we've done a great job controlling him uh, on the drive and that kind of stuff. And if we could keep that up in the second half, uh, we should have a positive outcome here. All right, and we'll see and set the starting lineups to see how different or if they are indeed the same as they were in the first half. Nobody really in foul trouble, so I don't see any reason why they would And see, the Greyhounds have took the floor, and indeed, the five that started the game are out on the floor. Number 25, Brooks. Number 30, Holyubar. Number 51, Wheezy. Number 5, Lucas. And number 10, Che. And for the Dons, also the five that started the game. Number 25, Whirling and Glidden. And I, one of those players, I guess Glitton would line up at a forward with Marsnick and Whirling at the guards. And Runyon and Kirby at the post. Kirby. As we get a good start to the second half. And Pam, I think those are the most important minutes of the game. The first three of the game 
of the last three of the first half, first three of the second half, and of course, if it's a close game, of course, the last three minutes of the game. Yeah, we sure need to set the tempo here in the next few minutes and see how we're going to play the second half, whether it's going to be an up-tempo game or if we're going to go back to control style. And I think that's a good start, Doc. Get the ball inside to one of your strong post players and either get a basket or go to the free throw line and Kirby hits them both. Don's up 34-26. 19 minutes to go, and Shea gets Indianapolis off to a pretty good start, too. Time we broke down a little bit in the press. Yeah, they broke that pretty easily, and again, Dodge don't hand it a ball, and Weezy comes up with it to Lucas. Lucas to Che. Out to Brooks. Back to Lucas, who takes the baseline again and gets to the basket. Hope I didn't wake him up. I hope not, because if he gets going, we could be in some big trouble. Don's up by three with a little bit over 19 minutes to go. Glitton on the wing tries the baseline. Back out to Kirby, and Che ties him up. Ryan was looking for the step out by Kyle there, and it just didn't get there and an alternating possession, but in this case, that's the equivalent of a turnover. Anytime you lose the possession and uh, come out short without trying to get a good shot at the basket, that really hurts you. I say that, Pam, at any level of basketball, lunchtime or to the NBA, get a shot at least. Do not turn the basketball over. In this situation, what it's done is we don't score at one end, they come down, score, and get the foul, so they could get a five-point turnaround here. Exactly. Runyon, um, in that case, you've got to, you know, just stand your ground, uh, try not to make the contact, although there wasn't much. Um, you can't have the foul that time by Runyon, and Oyabar to the line to try for a three-point play, and he gets it, and all of a sudden, we've got a tied-up ball game with 18.40 to go. Whirling on the wing. Baseline into Kirby. Good move. That time Kirby needed to, to use the left hand. He brought it back to the right hand, giving the defensive player a chance to catch up with that basketball. Che out top against Marsnick. Good defense by Marsnick. Weak side. Weak side rebounding again. Hoyabar. Foul Kirby as we get a good look at Kirby right there. We really got to start taking control of this game in the next minute or so. Don't want to put the added pressure on, feel like, uh, you know, we're just not coming through offensively. Got to make some good decisions down at the other end. Good point. Adams in for Kirby. And again, those three minutes that we talked about, I think we have Marsnick with a cut, with a cut on his hand as we see Andy Piazza giving instruction corners to Kyle Kirby. Marsnick had a little cut and a new rule, I think as of a couple of years ago, any type of cut, the player has to come out of the ball game. That's true, Charlie. Sometimes it can be in some key situations that can really hurt. So uh, Mike Gale's got his work cut out over here to try to get him patched up and back into the ball game. And Russ is the guy on the team that, uh, that sets the tempo. I've always thought a couple of years ago I played intramural basketball with Jeff Jackson, and I found him actually be a better two guard than a, a, a true point guard. <laughs> Although uh, last year um, he was very effective, you know, at the point, but uh, playing with him, I, just, I, I have a feeling he's just a better player when he doesn't have the responsibility of running the team and just coming out picks and uh, shooting the basketball. Oyabar again hitting two free throws. Jackson out to Glidden. Get some good motion offensively. And as we see already, the offense in a little bit of disarray without Marsnick on the court. Indianapolis having taken the lead, 36 to 34. Down to six seconds. Jackson with the bailout three. 
Nice offensive board there. Nice offensive board. Again, the Dodds need to be conscious. A few times tonight, they've had to take bail out three corners or very off-balance shots. It's good to run the clock down, but you have to get a good shot. Glitton out of bounds to Jackson. Runyon, little short. Shea out in front. Lucas for two. Just did kick. Uh, catch up on the open man on the outside there. Glidden for three. He doesn't need much room, fam. No, he <laughs> doesn't. A, he's hit a couple three-pointers tonight where I didn't think he was very open, but he just pulled up and very smooth and sank him. Weezy out front. Don's down by one. Greyhounds on top. Lucas to Che in the corner. Che with the fake baseline. Good pass. Indianapolis has really spread their offense out looking for the drive and the dish off and that time they got it. And some of the same things we, we've said about Russ Marshnick on the other side of the court. Uh, Che's doing the same thing. He said in the tempo that was a great fake baseline and Hoyer Bar does what a big man has to do or a big person has to do when you see your uh, guard or anyone going baseline, go to the front of the rim, either for the rebound or for the pass. And he has an attempt for a three-point play right here. And he's got it. Oh, your bar has eight points, I believe, in, um, in the outset of the second half. The Greyhounds up by four. Burling to Adam. Jackson to Kirby. Kirby with a good post position. The player had to come over his back. And Russ Marsnick back in the game. And you can see he has a, uh, some tape or bandage on his uh, left, uh, left hand there to stop whatever bleeding. And hopefully uh, he can stop the bleeding of the Dons. Marsnick Sanders tries the baseline. Fake Adams. Could do a little better job stepping to the ball on those kind of passes. Have to take care of the basketball. Back down to 12 seconds. Still by Lucas. Good cutoff of the baseline that time by Marsnick. Didn't quite get there that time. It's a real good try by Russ to cut that off, but uh, just got it. One step on him, and he just uh, didn't make it there. We have a timeout by IPFW. Uh, a pretty good timeout. I thought um, Coach Piazza would have taken one a little sooner, but just as I was about to say that, uh, Ryan Glidden sank the three-pointer. And we'll be right back with more GLVC action. The college basketball season is underway for 1994-95, and the Great Lakes Valley Conference has been rated by some as the toughest of the NCAA Division II conferences. Join Coach Andy Piazza and me, Matt DeLong, to get a closer look at the IPFW team and this year's competition. Double A GLVC action here at the Hilliard Gate Sports Center. Charles Washington, along with Pam Bowden, bringing you the action. Indianapolis Greyhounds 41, Macedon 37. We see with the air ball, Jackson with recover. Jackson to Sanders. Brooks with the rebound. We really get a start. Lucas. Shea wide open in the corner. 
Don's got a lucky break there. Che got a great look at it. Jackson all the way. Doesn't quite get it. Kirby, good rebound. Great job on that follow-up there by Kyle. Good hustle that time by Kirby. And the Don's has a press going here. Got to come up with those loose rebounds. Shea with Sanders on him. And again, yet another mismatch. Che uh, out on the floor with Sanders, and that's just not a match you want to see because Che will uh, get to the basket every time as we see the replay here. We got to fight through any screens that uh, is causing that mismatch, and we've got to just stay there and uh, guard him with Russ. Yeah, I've seen a couple of ill-advised switches. Um, the perimeter players just have to fight through those picks because they're putting the big people in some very precarious positions and trying to guard those quick players on the uh, perimeter. Good rebound. Good board work by Kirby. Jackson brings it up the right side. Brooks holding. Nice post up by Adams down low. Did a very good job not using the hands. Referees will let you, if you use forearm, you just use your body, you will not get the foul. But anytime you put that hand down on the player to try to get game uh, an advantage, you're going to get the offensive foul. Good job that time by Adams. And Weezy comes out of the game with three fouls. Sanders to Marsnick. Adams at the free throw line. Good. Did a lot better on out of bounds that time. First half received to uh, struggle there in the first half. That was a good down pick. There should be a stat or some type of an assist for his good picks. Press that time caused a turnover. That's what you did see. Lucas throwing it away. That would have been a tough pass for a big player to handle anyway coming in uh, from the right side. Jeff Jackson. Great job. Great job down low. Good job that time by Jeff Jackson in amongst the trees. Jeff was a pretty good rebound, a pretty strong upper body. And he can go in there and out uh, amongst the taller players and get some good rebounds that you just saw and finish. Makes a big difference when you got your two and your three going in there hard to the boards. Puts a lot of pressure on some of the other players. Exactly. And for all you Mastodon fans and attentively watching this game, I hear it's 39-39 IU in Illinois. And that's in the second half. Che off shot. Jackson with the rebound. Good look to Kirby. Foul on number 42, Shirk. Kyle Shirk fouling Kyle Kirby. Charlie, we're doing a little bit better job putting some pressure on the post players on Indianapolis down low, and that's going to help us. We're starting to get the foul and uh, get some easy baskets down low, so got to keep that up. Something Indianapolis seems to do, they're playing directly behind the post as opposed to fronting or um, playing the baseline side out. They're doubling up sometimes with the help side coming over and the guards pitching in. we got to look for that to look, kick it out and see if we could reverse the ball for a defensive mistake. Exactly. A lot of times the best thing to do, get that ball inside and get it out sometimes inside, outside. 44-41 to Don's back on top. Shirk to Hoyabar. Hoyabar. <laughs> Jackson again, getting in there. Jackson is really going to the boards hard, offensively and defensively, and that's uh, putting us right back on top where we need to be. Exactly. And all that's going to do for Jeff Jackson is his minutes will escalate. If he can show that he can go in there and bang on the glass from the two-guard position, he's going to see some more minutes. Jeff Jackson, 
Indianapolis is really trying to put a lot of pressure on us defensively by spreading it out. And IPFW obviously is putting the pressure on the Greyhounds. They are already in the bonus. Uh, Jeff Jackson hitting the front end and have a chance at the um, second half of that bonus. And he converts it. 13-10 left to play. Don's up 46-41. Lucas. Cal Kirby's making him pay for that. The Don's just don't have the quickness that they've had in the past. Um, great, it's a great press set up by Coach uh, Dick Dominion and Coach Piazza. But right now the Don's don't have the personnel in terms of quickness um, to play the press as they have in past years. It's making a big difference getting Lucas down the floor and putting the pressure on those post players. Yes, because there have been a number of times where there's been Lucas against Adams or, who, or whomever's been playing the back end of that zone press, and that's just a mismatch in favor of the Greyhounds every time when you have Lucas coming down against, you know, one of our uh, front-line players. And Lucas converts the free throws, and it's 46-43 with 13 minutes go in the game. Marcinek, Jason Burkhardt entered the game. Sanders to Burkhardt. Burkhardt just got his feet going a little too fast. I think he was looking for that move where he made the nice turnaround jumper in the first half. I think he was looking for the same move. Yeah, I think he was. Shea brings the ball up against Marsnick. Brooks to Shea, sure. Gotta control the drive. Here. Doing what good referees should do. That was a really tough call. The, the trail official just couldn't see. He got blocked up, blocked out by one of the players there. And they immediately did the right thing. They conferred. Neither of the referees saw. So uh, immediately they call a jump ball. Much to the dismay of Royce Waltman, coach of Indianapolis. I think the, I think the Dons did catch a break there. Jeff Jackson on the wing. Looking inside, now passes out to Sanders. Marsnick. Jackson on the post. Out top to Adams, to Sanders. Out top, Sanders. Nice shot. It was a mismatch on the guards. Took advantage of it. Sanders is a scorer. And you need that on the court. You need at least two scores at all time on the court. Good move by Che as he brings the guests from Indianapolis three points, low two points closer, three points down. Sanders tries the baseline, and Brooks forced to foul him. Sanders will go to the line. Got to look to hit the step out on that one. We got three players picking him up. See if we can kick the ball on the other side. Hopefully we can get some mismatch or some open players that way. And Coach Piazza, I'm sure as, as time goes along, will recognize that and he'll recognize that with the personnel that he will have on the floor. When you drive towards the basket and players converge, put some jump shooters out there or set shooters even, just some shooters. Sanders converts on the front end of the one and one, giving the Dons a four point advantage. With a little bit over 11 minutes to go at the Hilliard Gates Sports Center. GLVC action. 
and he hits another, and he goes out of the ball game to Ryan Glidden. Pulled the press off this time. Don's going small. Good defense by Glidden, whirling the basketball, Glidden. That's a good move, man. That's a, that's a great hesitation move. He just set his defensive player up and took it to him. It was a nice job. Indianapolis call a timeout. 34 to go. Indianapolis takes a timeout. Down by seven. 52-45. Get a look here at the IPFW bench. Coach Piazza has to be happy with the way uh, the troops actually got down in the first half, but now they've uh, come back up to get a lead by seven. And we'll be right back with more Great Lakes Valley NCAA action. Indianapolis basketball after they were forced to call a timeout. Jay Deweese. Back to Jay on top against Marsnick. Brooks with Glitton all over him. Looks like they're trying to get a little post action here. Right now the Dons are doing well with that three, um, that three guard offense uh, in essence. Playing very well. Weezy. As long as you keep the big guy from scoring on the outside, if we can control that, uh, we can work with three yards there. Burkhardt. Oh, steal by Lucas. And just like that, it's a three-point basketball game. Indianapolis applying some pressure. Glidden bringing the basketball up. Marsnick. Out top on the switch. Get a few mismatches off the screens. Burkhardt. Glitton with the rebound. It's a great offensive board. Foul that time by Burkhardt a little bit of an acting job that time by number 25 Brooks but nonetheless he'll go to the uh, free throw line and get two shots Spotlight. 54 Jason Burkhardt assist period replacing him number 42 Casey Bunny Runyon replaces Burkhardt big country but go have a seat Brooks no good on the first one he'll get another Second. 54-50 in favor of the good guys. IPFW up four with 850 to go here in the second half. Tough call there. Tough call there. Indianapolis got their hand on it. We lost control. It probably could have been a foul. I, I don't think it was a great call, but in any sense, I don't think Jason Worling had any business. I don't know where he was going on that play at that particular time. He's got to wear, watch where that pinch is coming from and kick it out. Good defense by the Dons as Indianapolis recognizes the mismatch, but they can't cash in. Adams 
From the perimeter, off shot, Brooks out to Lucas. And he slows it down. Jay on the drive baseline. Just not getting quick enough when they're reversing the ball. Jay he just is so quick. Yes, and although Runyon uh, got the brunt of that contact, he still nevertheless gets the foul. As we see the replay here, Runyon takes a good shot to the face, but he still comes away with the personal. And Che nails the first free throw, making it IPFW 54, 51 for the guests, 52 now for the guests from Indianapolis. Two-point ball game with a little bit over eight minutes to go. Marsnick bringing the basketball up. Whirling out top. Dribbles left. Out to Glitton against Lucas. Working, working. Out to Marsnick. Shot up, and it's good. Ryan did a great job looking for the open player. That's a good game right off the stack there. Guard to guard off the stack. Glitton to Marsnick. Shea against Marsnick. Good defense. Hoyabar to Brooks. Adams, baseline. Trying to get in a Good jumping action contest. That time. Good work on the board by Hoyabar. But it comes away empty. Marsnick to Adams. On the post. Almost threw it away. Runyon recovers out to Marsnick on top. 14 to go on the shot clock. Marsnick sets up. Marsnick. Oh my goodness, what a phenomenal shot That's by Adam. That's a great play. That's a great play. Recognizing how much time was left on the shot clock. Ball had not touched the rim. Great recognition that time by Adams. That was not the reaction of a young player that time. Great play. Shay, good look. Shay's a very heady basketball player. And the big men, you have to give those them credit for Indianapolis. They go right to the front of the basket looking for the pass. Great job looking for the lob back on the back cut. Foul on the shot that time. Michael Brooks. For the last few games, our young guys have just done some great things, and they've really shown their maturity, how it's developing over the last couple games. Yes. Chad Mills enters the ball game for Indianapolis. Weezy taking a seat on the bench. Jason Whirling. New Haven, right around the corner. Semi in front of the home fans, I guess. Why not? He's in front of the home fans. And he nails the first shot. It's for the second. And it's good. Putting the dimes up by six, 60 to 54 with 6 12 to go in the game. Shade. Out to shirt. Shay with the ball. Marston guarding. Marston's doing a great job defense one-on-one -on -one with him. Yes. Didn't look like much of a foul there, but uh, just looked like some good action um, on the block there, fighting for a position. But the foul comes up on number 41, Dane Adams, for the dime, as we see here. Adams working hard to get around him. Call you by nails the first. Kyle Kirby comes in for Dane Adams. Adams did a pretty good job out there. Hoyabar gets another shot trying to bring Indianapolis Greyhounds to within four. And he does. Five fifty to go in the basketball game. 
Marshman out to Glidden. Glidden for three. He is a smooth jump shooter. Puts the dimes up by seven. Lucas in trouble out top and throws the ball away. IPFW played some great defense. One on one on the guards there. Forced the turnover. Great defense by the Dimes. So if you can make it a nine or ten point game right here. Yes, a score here will put a lot of pressure on the Greyhounds with five minutes to go in the basketball game. Dimes are really working the offense. Whirling did the last time, same thing he did last time, trying to drive uh, to the middle, not towards the basket. And actually, he traveled that time. Still that time by Holubar, up to Lucas. Not a smooth possession that time by the Dimes. Not smooth at all. Lucas. Mills to Lucas, back to Mills to Che in the corner. And that's just a heady basketball play that time by uh, Che. And he may get three, three uh, shots out of that. And oh, he, I does. Think he does. Really had nowhere to go, but he saw Glitton running at him, and he did what any good shooter do, will do. Get the ball up like you're shooting the basketball, and you get three free throws, a chance to get three points, but the clock stopped. And he misses the first. Well, we just got to hope that we can uh, not make so many from the line here and uh, keep that spread. Maybe see if we can go up by 9 or 10. Shea hits the second one. Shea out of Urbana, Indiana. And he hits two. Russ Marsnick, no hurry, bringing the basketball up the court. Out to Glitton. <laughs> Offensive foul that time by Kirby. And again, Shay <laughs> takes the charge. Play control, so there'll be no free throws. IPFW getting in for the huddle, trying to control it. Good rebound that time by Kirby. Kirby with Che up on him right underneath the basket. There's no need, an easy shot there to shoot over Che. No need to put the shoulder into somebody five foot eight or five foot ten, however tall Che is. Someone six five putting his shoulder in as we see the replay there. Could have had the easy jumper. At this level, you have to, you can make a six foot jump shot in the lane. For you IU fans, they are in trouble. Down 10 with seven plus minutes to go. Another touch foul here. Uh, Ryan Glitton, they call for a hold. Um, IPFW, uh, whether they're legitimate fouls or not, you can't get yourself into that situation where you're sending Indianapolis to the line to get points without the clock moving. Oyubar, who's had a great second half, converts the first. We've got to stop the drive, get a lot of foul trouble right now, put a lot of pressure on some people. Report. KC Runyon with the rebound. Up to Marsnick. Don's up four. 3.50 to go. Marsnick to Glidden. Adams at the pinch post. Into Sanders. Sanders with the shot. Tough one there. Didn't have the weak side board. Slide in. 
Luka Doncic need to get something going to the basket. Uh, they're falling away on their jump shots and they're not driving to the basket. And in essence, they're letting the Greyhounds right back in this basketball game. Shade drive to the basket. Adams tried to draw the charge. Now it looked like Adams was set and it didn't seem to be underneath the basket. I know in many cases if the defensive player is under, underneath the basket, you won't get that call. Let's see on the replay. It looked like he was set. Coach Piaz is a little upset about that call. Looked pretty good, like pretty good defense on the replay even. And IPFW has another player who will exit the game due to foul. Gonna hurt our inside game just a little bit. We'll see if we have somebody stepping up the play and the post coming in. You're right. Both Kirby, uh, Kirby and uh, Adams have played very good. Again, it looked like Adams was there, but I don't make the calls. Weezy back in the ball game for sure. Marsnick brings the ball up. IPFW, three minutes, only up two. Sander. Steve Sanders goes to the line to get two. Sanders trying to take advantage of the height there against Che. And he converts the first. That's as he did the same thing that Kirby should have done a few moments ago. Just pull up and take the jump shot with the shorter player. Misses the second. IPFW up three. Che brings the ball up. Ayubar to Lucas with Glidden guarding. Got the help side over that time, Charlie. Through the charge. We'll take it. Let's see the replay there. job there that's the hardest play the hardest foul to call or no call for referees and I'm glad I'm not down there making it me too Marsnick oh great job nice three Marsnick for three I don't think Russ has missed a shot tonight he's taking three three pointers and one two pointer I think he's nailed them all and puts the guns up by six with 156 to go. Great movement that time. Post the perimeter action that time by Jason Burkhardt out to uh, Russ Marsnick, the Hammond, Indiana native from the region. That was a big basket. That uh, could be the key basket right there for uh, IPFW. I think so. I think they may have been doubting themselves, and I think that basket gives them a lot of newfound confidence. Looked like even Russ got hit there on the after the shot, but still he made a great jumper there. And I think ref, referees are very hesitant to call that fall. I think a lot of players are doing some flops to take those three-point shots. Then a player comes flying past, and sure, why not <laughs> try and get a chance to get a four-point play? Yeah, and it puts a lot of pressure on the uh, the official that's down the baseline because he's got to watch play coming in bounds after the shot. You got the other two officials getting down the court, so sometimes you get their heads turning and they just miss that. You're right. You're right. And plus, you, you're watching a foul if and if indeed there is contact. Plus, if it indeed was a three-point shot, also. So it puts a little pressure on the officials, also. 
Let's see if IPFW can just hold and maintain uh, their lead here and uh, put a little bit more pressure on Indianapolis. Sometimes, if, if I'm IPFW, I may think about crossing uh, the Greyhounds up a little bit, throwing, you know, maybe a zone one time just to cross them up sometimes uh, at this stage of a game to throw a team off they can see looking at the same thing all game. Cross them up one time. That's too easy. That was too easy. Shea puts a little token pressure on Marsnick. They skip pass. Litton drives Marsnick. I think that's his first miss of the night. That's a good look. Just need to play some good defense now. Got the blocking foul again down low. That's a good match of quickness on quickness. Uh, Lucas and Marcinic, probably two of the quickest players um, in the conference this year, going head to head, and that was good defense. Russ is working him hard, that's for sure, down low. Timeout taken by Coach Andy Piazza to talk things over with 109 left here to play in the basketball game. IPFW 67. Indianapolis Greyhound 63. And we'll be right back. And I'm Tim Haffin. Watch us every Friday evening at 7 p.m. for IPFW Volley Down Highlights. We'll also describe strategies and fundamentals for all you new volleyball fans. We, we may even invite a volley down or two to join us on the show. So tune in to us every Friday night at 7 p.m. here on Channel 6. IPFW is still in the huddle, talking things over with 109 to go up 67 to 63. This will be a really big win for the Dons coming off a win uh, Thursday. Two conference wins in a row, um, five and nine, and actually three and two in the conference, and, and you're not in that bad of shape. Well, that's going to be interesting to see what uh, Coach Piazza came with out with with a timeout there. See if he's going to try to slow it down, maybe with the press, or uh, if they're just going to get back in the half court game and play just tough, straight up one on one D. Pam, I'm sure you'll agree. This is where coaches earn their money in tight basketball games under three minutes to play in the game. Well, I'll tell you, I'm finding that out the hard way. <laughs> Lucas converts, and we got a two point ball game with one minute to go here. Glidden bringing the ball up. With Luke is all over it. Sure is. Glidden's doing a great job. Keeping the dribble alive and not picking it up too early. That's a good point, because when you pick up that dribble, that just causes all kind of movement problems. And if the timing isn't on the play, because they're getting bumped and stuff, uh, sure is going to make a difference. Didn't hold the seal down low. Good hustle that time by Holly Bar. Yep. Yeah, and you're right. Burkhardt ha has to keep that person. You need a better angle, first of all, but Burkhardt has to keep that person on his hip. Oh, way to get the shot off with three seconds. Great recognition by a heady senior. You'd expect that kind of play from Marston. Shea from the corner for three. No good. Rebound, Hallubar, Lucas to Che again for three. Good. 18, 18 seconds, seconds to go. Indianapolis up by one. And just like that, you're looking up at the Greyhounds. Have an IU update. IU down 10 points with a little over two minutes to go in that basketball game. But we have more important matters at hand here. The Dons down one. They've been ahead most of this game, and definitely most of the second half. And all of a sudden, they're looking up at the Greyhounds with 
18 seconds to go. As we just had a look at the huddle of the Indianapolis uh, Greyhounds. And we'll see what Coach Andy Piazza has in store for the Greyhounds as he sets up a play out of his huddle. Real care here is that we get the ball in bounds and not make mistake passing and an uh, easy turnover there to turn the ball back over to Indianapolis. We got to use the clock and get a good shot off. Good point, and this is what I've been saying all along. I think Marshnick, with his quickness, has to get to the basket. Uh, he has the quickness to get to the basket, and um, sure, his stature, he's pretty small, but if he can't get to the basket, he's a great passer. He can kick it out to your Glinton. Uh, Sanders is in the basketball game. A lot of good shooters or inside if one of your big people come to help out. Yeah, That's we'll what I would like to see. It'll be interesting to see how much time they run off the clock and if they're looking for the drive to try to draw the foul or if they're going to put it up with an outside jumper. Grenion inbounds to Marshnick as he walks the ball up the court with 10 seconds to go. Marshnick to the basket to Runyon. I think the Dons, the Dons got bailed out. Casey Runyon has to be a little stronger than that. It was a tough pass, but Casey has to, has to be big and strong inside there. Got the ball down pretty low that time. He almost could have gotten it stolen because he turned real quick. Two very big free throws here with four seconds to go in the basketball game. Tie game. Great shot there by Casey. Way to take control. Casey taking one of the biggest free throws of his IPFW career here as he attempts to put the Dons up by one with four seconds to go in the basketball game. Yeah. And it's good. Oh, great shot. What you want to try to avoid here, Pam, is the long pass. With the long pass over half court, four seconds is plenty of time but uh, with good defense and we get it into the backcourt four seconds is a little a lot shorter uh, time as opposed to the long pass so that's what you want to do try and funnel the pass into the backcourt and uh, force the great house to use a lot of that clock that short clock four seconds sure don't want to see them get that long pass and the easy shot and a chance for even an offensive board and we got to really force them to have to dribble the ball up the court Great basketball action here. Great GLVC action. IPFW Mastodons ahead of the Greyhounds of Indianapolis. 69-68 with a mere four seconds remaining in the contest. Charlie, what Don's kind of coming in at 4-9 and 9-4 nine, and nine and for the Greyhounds. Charlie, what kind of things do you think uh, Coach Piazza is going to come up here uh, defensively? I, um, some pressure. Um, definitely... Um, if only token pressure, something to keep the Greyhounds occupied, something to keep them thinking about the clock, thinking about you as a defender once they throw the basketball in. Definitely no long passes. And also, I was just about to make the point that if IPFW has timeouts, they would get a look at the alignment of the uh, Greyhounds and then call a timeout and then adjust accordingly. IPFW doesn't have any more timeouts after this, and so they're going to have to uh, hope that they, uh, the Greyhounds don't tie the game up. Let's pose a question to you as a coach. What are you thinking as a defensive team? Well, I want them to make the, the, the short pass, so they've got to take the four seconds off the clock and take a long three-pointer and uh, not get any easy in, inside shots. Um, cannot make that long pass. We'll see what they do, what uh, Indianapolis can else with this time. See if they were trying to go for the bluff with the, uh, you know, the easy setup and hope in the hopes that Coach Piazza uh, called the timeout there. It's also a, a point to uh, remember that the Indianapolis player can run the baseline. That's true. And also a player may step out and that'll, that's, that's a Andy Piazza trick actually. That's true. Andy used it the last game as a matter of fact. Good defense by the Macedons. Great win by the Dons. That 
shot was right on track. Lucas just about pulled this basketball and came out from the Indianapolis Greyhounds. But the shot fell just short and a little bit to the left. And the Dons pull one out to go five and nine overall, three and two in the conference. It's a good try by Indianapolis to get the ball to Lucas, their main man. All right. Don, 69, Indianapolis 68, and we'll be right back. First-year IPFW women's basketball coach Pam Bowden is enjoying a fine preseason after coming to IPFW from the University of Alaska Anchorage. She has inherited a club which returns no seniors but still enjoys one of the top ratings in the Great Lakes Valley Conference. We want you to tune in every Wednesday at 7.30 to find out more information about the IPFW women's basketball team all season long. In our ever-expanding world, we need a reliable source, one that addresses important aspects of our daily lives and provides us with useful information. Health and Home Report is that source, with stories on how to get the most for your money, where to go for a great vacation, hot fashion tips, what's happening in the world of arts and entertainment, and the latest medical breakthroughs. Health and Home Report provides a world of information. The college basketball season is underway for 1994-95, and the Great Lakes Valley Conference has been rated by some as the toughest of the NCAA Division II conferences. Join Coach Andy Piazza and me, Matt DeLong, to get a closer look at the IPFW team and this year's competition. Tim Heffern. Watch us every Friday evening at 7 p.m. for IPFW Volley Down Highlights. We'll also describe strategies and fundamentals for all you new volleyball fans. We, we may even invite a volley down or two to join us on the show, so tune in to us every Friday night at 7 p.m. here on Channel 6. Increasingly competitive world we live in, and this is the country we want ahead of the competition. These are the people we'll be depending on to keep this country ahead of the competition. These are the colleges and universities we're relying on for the people we're depending on to keep this country ahead of the competition. So if you want America to stay number one in the world, do something about it. Give to the college of your choice. We at IPFW are pleased to be able to bring you the cable cast of NCAA athletic competition. We hope you've enjoyed the show and the excitement of intercollegiate sports from IPFW. To provide such programs, we need your support. With the programs at a relatively low cost, your contribution will help defray the production costs not covered by Channel 6 budget. The College Cable Access Center invites you to invest in quality college programming by sending your contribution to Channel 6 at IPFW, 2101 Coliseum Boulevard East, Fort Wayne, Indiana, 46805. Please make your check out to the Indiana Purdue Foundation at Fort Wayne and designated for College Cable Access Athletics. The College Cable As As Access Program Guide provides information about your programming, including IPF Sports, telecasts, to receive your free Channel 6 program guide send your name address and zip code to channel 6 at IPFW 2101 Coliseum Boulevard East Fort Wayne Indiana 46805 
or call us at 481-6000. We'll be right back for more GLVC basketball action right after. And we're going to bring you an interview with Charlie Washington with Russ Marinick. Here we go. And welcome back. Charles Washington here tonight with tonight's Great Lakes Valley Conference IPFW Dandy Dom player of the game, Russ Marsnick. Uh, Russ, I think you only missed one shot. You didn't take many, but all the ones you took, you knocked down. Yes, well, that's uh, my role really isn't to shoot the ball, but as a point guard, I was supposed to knock them down when they come, and I tried to do the best I could with that tonight. Explain a little bit about, you said a little bit about your role, but as a leader, I see you don't look for the shots, but you're out there the most minutes by far on, on the basketball court. Just explain how you control the tempo of the basketball game. Well, I, I feel like I have to use my quickness to control the game I, by handling the ball and send the tempo for our team and getting us in the uh, swing of things offensively and defensively. Russ, you won Thursday night and tonight, which puts you 5-9 and nine overall and 3-2 and two in the conference. Explain what these two wins mean to, to this basketball team. Oh, they mean, right now, they mean the world to us. We, we had some tough times earlier in the year, and hopefully we're coming through it uh, at the uh, conference time, which is the most important time of the season. It puts us at 3-2 and two in the conference and right in the thick of things as far as the conference race goes. Now, what about some of the combinations out there? I saw you start, you started pretty much a three-guard offense. Are you pretty comfortable with that, or would you rather see the more traditional two guards and the three big fellas? I think we're feeling real comfortable with our three-guard offense. Ryan Glidden is really picking up his game. He's shooting the ball well, and uh, he's being more of a leader than he was earlier in the year, and uh, it's meaning a lot to us. And as long as we're uh, moving the ball and playing, playing good uh, basketball, we're okay. Mm -hmm. And that leads me to the next point. What are the keys for the success of the Dons? There have been a lot of different combinations, uh, different lineups. What's the big key for the, for the success of the Dons? I think the big key is just to stay focused on what we have to do and not worry about who's playing and just when the five men that are in there, just to do what we're supposed to do and execute and we'll be, uh, be successful. Okay. Well, great. Good luck, Russ, to you and the rest of the Dons. To one region person, that's, to another region right. person. Hello, hello to the region. Officer. Congratulations. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks. Now back to you, Pam. Once again, once again, it's IPFW 69-68 over in University of Indianapolis. What a great game it was. This telecast of uh, the IPF sports event is copyrighted in the sole property of the College Access Center and IPFW. Unauthorized duplication, exhibition, retransmission, or rebroadcast, or any other use of this event without express written consent is strictly prohibited. Don't forget to tune in to Channel 6 Friday, January 20th at 8 to see NCAA volleyball action as the Patriots from George Mason University take on the IPF Volley Dons. This is Pam Bowden and Charlie Washington. Goodbye for now.